of sixth grade. It is Monday, May 11th. Hope everybody is doing well today. We will be working in our textbook and you guys will be following along with this video. We're moving into our next module. Uh, before uh, you do that, what I'd like for you to do is um, pause the video, go on to Google Classroom or Ren Web Facts, whichever is easier for you, um, to have access to the um, Are You Ready? So uh, again, it is physically on Google Classroom, but if you want to, uh, would rather do it in your book and send a picture, you could do that too. So please do the Are You Ready? That's on page 448. Please do that first and submit it and then come on back and then we'll start our uh, lesson. Okay. Okay, hopefully you are back. Uh, let's go ahead and start in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, in this module, we are gonna be learning measures of center. We're also gonna be learning how to display data how to organize information. Think way back when to when you guys were in third grade and during Halloween we did that. We did bar graphs and uh, line plots and everything on, um, I think we were surveying people's favorite candy or something like that. Um, so we're gonna take data, that kind of data. It's not gonna be as simple. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated, but we're gonna take that kind of data and be able to analyze it or look at patterns or trends, okay, that we're seeing when we collect data. Okay, lesson 16.1, measures of center. We've talked about some of this before, but this is gonna get a little bit more compli complicated, so I need you guys to really stay with me, okay? Make sure you're watching the videos before you're actually attempting to do the work. Okay, I'm on page 451, finding the mean. A measure of center is a single number used to describe a set of numerical data. A measure of center describes a typical value from the data set. So in other words, it's about, you know, like the average, or it's, if you look at all the numbers all together, all your data all together, you can find a, a number that's the mean, or also what we call the average, okay? One measure of center is the mean. The mean or average of a data set is the sum of the data values divided by the number of data values in the set. Okay, sounds a little confusing. Some of you guys already know how to do this to figure out like what your um, uh, grade would be, like say in math. You'd add up all your grades that you have and then divide by however many, like say we took five tests and you wanna find out the average of your test scores. You would add up all five of your test scores and then divide by five because there's five tests, so there's five sets of data that you're analyzing. Okay, let's read here. Tammy surveyed five of her friends to find out how many brothers and sisters they have. Her results are shown in the table. So right here, this is the number of siblings. So Amy has two, Ben has three, and so on. Now, you're not gonna need to do this, but they just wanted you to model it here. Model each person's response as a group of counters. Again, we're not gonna be, we're gonna be doing this more mathematically, but just for the sake of this first explore activity, they want us to do it hands-on. So they just swapped out counters for the number of siblings of each of these people that they asked. Now on B, it says now rearrange the counters so that each group has the same number of counters. So I'm gonna take a counter from here and put it in here. And I want all of my groups to be equal. So I'm gonna take another one and put it in here. And I'm just gonna cross out as I go that way I can pay attention to know what I have already used in my data set. Okay, each group now has two counters, so I've just rearranged them from here to here. The value is the mean this model demonstrates how the mean evens out the data values. When I said evens out, notice the difference between this table and this table, okay? All of these did not have an equal amount because they don't all have an equal amount of siblings. 
but I rearranged it. I evened it out so that everybody had an equal amount. Even if this isn't true of everybody, I mean, Cal only has one sibling, but I changed it and evened them out. Use the numbers to calculate the mean. So what they mean by numbers here, I'm not going to use these numbers right here. I'm going to go back to my original numbers or the numbers in the table. So I have to add up all the number of siblings. So they've got the two and the three. I need one, one, and one. So if I add all those up, I get two plus three is five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I did that wrong, didn't I? Five. Oh, this is supposed to be three. Mm, okay. Sorry about that. Eve has three. Sorry about that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. How many data values are in the set? In other words, how many people were surveyed or how many people are involved? How many sets of data do you have? You have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's how we're rearranging. And remember, right now we're finding mean. Okay, we're finding this. Eventually, we're going to find what's called the median. And we'll explain that when we get to that. Page 452. This is a continuation of what we did on the front. So the sum of the data values, remember, I added up all the number of siblings and I got 10. Then the number of data values, that's how many kids were surveyed, and I got five. So even though this is a fraction, it's also division. So you're gonna take your total number of your data values and divide it by however many people you surveyed or if you're looking at how many tests you took, okay? So 10 divided by five is two. So the average number or the mean of the number of siblings of the people surveyed is about two, okay? Look at number one. Can the mean be greater than the greatest value in the data set? I'm gonna go back over here. It's saying, can the average, which we said was two, that's our mean, could it possibly be bigger? Could it possibly be four or five or six? Well, it can't because the mean has to be able to be included in the values that you have. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of these. It might be something in the middle. Of what it might have been, it could have been 2.5 if we had a decimal, okay, or two and a half, whatever. Um, but it has to be part of your data set, so it cannot be larger than your data set. So right here, it's asking, could it be larger? And no, it must be a value represented uh, within the data set. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? It's got to be somewhere in between. In this case, it has to be somewhere in between 1 and 3, okay? Okay, now we're talking about the median. Now this is different. People get them mixed up because they all um, start with an M. And then there's even another way, another uh, method of finding um, information on a data set called mode, but we'll get to that. So remember, mean is the same as average, finding the average. Median, let's find out what median is. Another measure of center is the median. The median represents the middle value of an ordered data set. So example number one, a, co a coach records the distances that some cross country team members ran last week. So here's the data that the coach collected. And notice it's in no particular order, okay? You have to rewrite your data set in order from least to greatest. So what, I, what they did here is they looked at the smallest number, oh, three, okay? So I'm gonna put three here. And what I would do if I were you is, if I was documenting the three, I would put like a little check mark next to it or something, indicating that, oh, okay, I did include that. Especially when you have a whole list of numbers, it's real easy to forget some. And if you forget some, that's gonna throw off all your data. Another thing I wanna point out to you, notice I have two fives here. That's because I have two fives listed here. So if I had three fives listed here, then I would need three fives. 
So don't just write five one time. You have to represent five as many times as what's in your data set. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So basically they've rewritten the numbers in order from least to greatest, making sure that they included all the data here from the clipboard. Then what you're gonna do is, this is how I do it, and it's up to you of how you guys wanna do it. If you start at either end, work your way in one at a time. So I'm gonna cover up the first and the last, and then the next two, 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 and whatever number is left right in the middle, that's your median, your middle number. So in this instance, my median would be seven. That wasn't so hard because I had an odd number of data sets. There's an odd number in the data sets, okay? Well, you're not always gonna have an odd number. Sometimes you're gonna have an even number. So if you look at B, the median of these test scores, okay, so there's all the test scores. Write the data values in order from least to greatest. And again, what I would have done, and they've already done the work for you, I would have said, okay, where's my smallest one? That's 77, I know I'm gonna start with that. And I would write 77, cross it out to make sure that I have included it. Now using the system that we used up here, how we started outside and worked our way in, we're gonna do the same thing here, cover up, first and last, then the next two, then the next two, then the next two. Well, I don't have one number left in the middle. I have two numbers left in the middle. So the way that we're gonna solve this is similar to what we did for the uh, mean or the average. If you end up with two numbers in the center of your data set, you're gonna add those two numbers together and then divide by two. So you're finding the mean within the median. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, that happens when you have an even amount of data. If you have an odd amount, it will be like this and you'll end up with one number in the middle. Okay, when you have a whole ton of numbers, you wanna make sure if you're writing them out that you're spacing them out the best that you can. Okay, so what they did here is they added 87 and 90 and divided by two and they got 88.5. So the median of this data set, so the median of the test scores was about 88 and a half or 88.5, okay? You guys will be able to use your um, calculators too, okay? So if you need to pause the video to go get a calculator or if you use it on your device, whatever it is that you guys need. Okay, now I'm gonna move to page 453. And this is talking about what we just figured out there with the, the scores the, or the running distances. What if, which units are used for the data in A? Going back to A, units meaning how are they counting it? Are they counting it in minutes? Are they counting it in miles? Are they counting it? How are they counting this? And right here, what we have is distances run. So it's not minutes, that MI stands for miles. So, what is the unit used? And they use miles. If the coach had recorded some distances in kilometers and some in miles, can you still find the median of the data? Explain. Well, you can't. The units, whenever you do it this way, the units all have to be consistent. So say he did do a kilometer for somebody, he would have to readjust that or convert that into miles. Okay, you can't compare kilometers to miles. It's like that old saying, you can't compare apples to oranges. They all have to be the same unit. So if I'm talking about dollars, they all have to be in dollars, not cents. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so no, all data must be recorded using the same unit. And again, when I say unit, that could be inches and feet, dollars and cents, it could be all kinds of ways of measurement. Okay, Charlotte recorded the number of minutes she spent exercising in the past 10 days. Then there's all that data. Find the median of the data. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite my data and I'm gonna leave myself plenty of room. 
my smallest number, remember, you have to write greatest to least. I'm sorry, least to greatest. So I'm going to have one, cross it out, two, no threes. I have a four. I have one five. Six looks like my next one. Seven. Then I have eight and eight, so I need two eights. So remember, you have to document it twice. Nine and twelve. Okay. Now remember, they ask for median, not mean, not average. Okay, cross out these two, these two, these two, these two. Well, look at that. I end up with two numbers in the middle because if you notice, let's count the data set. How many do I have in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, of course, it's an even number, so I'm going to end up with two in the middle. Remember how to figure that out. Now we're going to do the mean within the median. So I need to find out the average of these two numbers here. So 6 plus 7, that's your first step. You're going to add these two up here for a total of 13. Okay, now we need to do some division here. And you're probably going to end up with a fraction or a decimal. So I'm going to do it up here. So remember, my it's going to look like this. 13 is my total number, just right here. Can, oh, and it's not going to be 10, I'm sorry. It's going to be 2. Now, 10 was my original amount of data. 2 is my data that I'm just looking at right here. That's why this is a 2 and not a 10. Okay. So 2 divided into 13, and I think I'm going to leave it in decimal form. Uh, so 2 times 6 is 12. And 1... Go ahead and, and you can you can do it in fraction form too if you want to. 10, 6.5. So you should end up with 6.5, and we're talking about, go back to see what your units are, minutes. So it's 6.5 or 6 and a half minutes is your final answer. Okay, in activity two, we're going to be finding the mean and finding the median. So you're probably going to need your um, calculator for this because the numbers are pretty big. What we're going to be doing here is trying to figure out what's a better measurement of a particular uh, set, set of data. So let's comparing the mean and the median. The mean and the median of a data set may be equal, very close to each other, or very different from each other. For data sets where the mean and median differ greatly, one likely describes the data set better than the other. In other words, which one represents the set of data better, the mean or the median? Because sometimes they're like way off. So let's figure this out, okay? First, we're going to figure out the mean. Here's the monthly earnings of several teenagers, and it shows how much each of the teenagers made during that month. So I'm going to take those numbers and plug them in. Now remember, I'm doing, this is the mean, so you don't have to do it in order from least to greatest. Okay, that's the median where you have to do it least to greatest. Okay, let's plug this in. And again, we want the mean. Okay, and then it wants us to round to the nearest tenth. So when we end up in our final answer, they want it in decimal form because they're talking about money. And they're going to want us to stop at the tenths place or round to the tenths place. So let's plug in some information here. I've got my 200, 320, 275. Remember, it does not have to be in order from least to greatest. 250, 750, 350, and 310. Take a minute before we start doing our addition of all the, the total amount. Take a minute to look at those amounts. You're going to see something different. There's a striking difference between some of these. Okay. File that away for just a second. There's something really different about some of these. Okay, go ahead and add up all those numbers on the top. You can use a calculator. 
going to pause for a second let you guys do that. Okay, your total, and go ahead and pause if you guys aren't ready, okay? Should be 2,455. They didn't give you a whole lot of room to write there, did they? Mm. Now remember, your number down here needs to be the number of data we had. So let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they surveyed seven teenagers. So you're going to take your full amount that they all made all together, divide by seven. Take a minute to do that. And again, you're going to get a decimal. And they want you to round to the tenths place. You should get 350.7 or 70, 70 cents. Okay, so this right here is my mean of all my information or my average. Now they want me, we're getting ready to find the median. Now I have to put it in order from least to greatest, very important. So I'm since I already crossed these guys out up here, I'm gonna use this one here. Looks like 200 is the least. Two fifty. Two seventy five. Three ten. Three twenty. Three fifty. And finally, seven fifty. Okay, remember I told you to look at that data and see that there's something that's very, very different from every bit, all the other numbers? Look at how much different this 750 is compared to all the others. Now, the others are off a little bit. I mean, 200, and then you've got 350. That's 150 more. That's a pretty big difference. But look at what a huge jump it makes. These are all like in the 200, 300 range, and then all of a sudden you get way up to 750, which is almost, if you would round it, to 800. This is going to throw off your numbers. This is what we call an outliner, okay? When you guys take statistics and stuff when you get into college, and even some in high school, you'll be looking at this going, wait a minute, out of all the set of data, one of them like sticks way out. It's either way less or way more. Well, that's going to throw off your information here, okay? So we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, let's find our median, okay? So cover up. First and last, next two, next two. It is telling me that my median is 310. I'm going to circle that one right there. Okay, they're asking the mean and the me median differ by about what? Well, compare this 350, that was my mean. Here's my median, 310. So they differ by about $40. Remember, we're just kind of rounding, see that about? So they differ by about $40. That's a pretty big difference. Usually your mean and median are pretty close. Well, this 750, that outliner, is what totally threw your numbers. That's why it's such a big difference between that. So it's affected by, so the data is affected by the 750. Is affected by the 750 amount. Okay, so if I were to look at this, what did, do you think is the better reflection? The mean or the median of these numbers? Is this the better reflection, 350.7 or 310? Think about that for a second. Now, probably, this is what I would say, and sometimes this is very subjective. Depends, if you guys said the mean, the mean and you justified it, 
I might accept that. But in this case, I think the median is a better indicator because it is the leaser, leaser, sorry, lesser amount. And notice this 310 is closer in amount to all the other data except for this guy over here. So really 310 is more representative of the data. Okay, do you guys see how I justified that? 310 is closer to these numbers here than it is to the 750. So I think the median is the better representation. So I'm gonna say the median uh, because 310 is uh, more representative, oops, represent, sorry, it's kind of squishy, of the data, or it represents the data better. Okay, and let's look at the reflect on page 454. You might need to do some of this on a piece of scratch paper. You might be able to have room because you've got a little bit of room here and there. Luca's final exam scores for this semester are 70, 72, 99, 72, and 69. Find the mean and medium. Which is a better description of Luca's typical exam score? Explain your thinking. Before we start listing this in data form and finding our mean and median, take a minute to look at your data set. 70, 72, 99, 72, 69. Okay, right away, in analyzing the data, you can see one of those numbers sticks out way more than the others. Okay, that's gonna mean something here. Okay, so I'm gonna find the mean first on this line. Remember the mean, you just line up the numbers. They don't have to be in any particular order. And I'm gonna be adding them all up Okay, and I'm gonna, oh, okay, well, let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, so go ahead and add up all those numbers, and I don't have the answer to that there, so I'm gonna try to figure it out along with you guys on my calculator. So I've got 70 plus 72 plus 99 plus 72 plus 69 for a total of 382. Okay, so what I want to do then is I need to divide 382 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to do this to indicate that I need to divide that. And you should have gotten, for your median, 76.4. If I'm going too fast, make sure you guys are pausing, okay? So that's my mean. Now I need to find my median. Now remember, you must line them up in order from least to greatest. 69, 70, I've got two 72s and a 99. I'll make sure I have all five. One, two, three, four, five, yep. Okay, remember on this one, we're gonna look for our middle number. Cross out these two, cross out these two, this is telling me 72 is my median. Now, similar to what we did on this page here, we're gonna analyze which number is more representative of the situation, just by looking at it. This is telling me 76.4 is the better indicator. This is telling me 72 is the better indicator. Well, if I were to choose which one I think is more representative, I would have to say it would be the median because 72 is closer to most of the data except that 99. Remember that 99 is called an outliner that throws off all the information. So Luca pretty consistently scored in the 72-ish range and that 99, he did really good on that test. So, but we can see that the median probably represents it better even though the uh, mean isn't quite as far off as it was for this one here. I mean, that $40, that was kind of a little bit further distance away from one another. 
these aren't quite so far in distance, but I would probably say 72 would be the better representation. Okay, what I'd like for you guys to do now is to pause the video. I would like for you to do the guided practice and then to come on back and check your answers with mine. Hopefully you have enough room on here. If not, you may have to do things on a piece of scratch paper, okay? So go ahead and pause. Remember, this is an honor system, okay? And then come on back and check your answers. Okay, hopefully you are back. I'm gonna plug my answers in. I'm not gonna show you all the work how I did it. I'm just gonna plug the answers in. Okay, I've got 15 and five and three is my mean. So the number of mean number of pets is three. Okay, the weights of the dogs, you should have a you should have 42 as your middle number. You were probably gonna to have to rewrite that there. Okay. Yeah, because if you notice one, two, three, four, five, six, you have an equal, uh, an even number of data in the set. So you're going to take the middle two numbers, divide by two. Suppose all the weights were, uh, one of the weights was given in kilograms. Could you uh, find the median in that case? And no, they all need to be the same units. You could change the kilograms, okay, to find the weight in pounds, then you could figure it out. Number three, mean should be 8.5 and your median is six. And it says, which describes the better, uh, uh, describes it better, the mean or the median? And I would probably have to say the median. The answer, or in other words, six, is closer to most of the values of the data. Most uh, values, sorry of or in the data set. Okay. All right, so we are gonna stop there. We did a lot. I, I happen to find this kind of lesson pretty interesting. I think it's fun to be able to look at information and say, oh, what's the average or what's, you're gonna see that a lot like when um, people are involved in like jobs that have to do with like marketing or they're trying to figure out, oh, what's the best selling um, car? You know, if Honda's looking at all their cars and they wanna do a survey of what's the best selling car, or then they can do this type of information and um, glean some information from that. Um, so you see that a lot in marketing and, and things like that. Okay guys, you see a lot of this too in um, sports, like statistics when, you know, baseball, basketball, you know, um, shooting averages and everything, they'll take, you know, the full amount of however many, you know, they say they made out of, they, somebody tried to make 10 shots at a basket and they got eight uh, out of the 10. Okay, now what were you, what are you gonna do with that data? Okay, well, they got eight out of 10. So you see this a lot in real life application. Okay, so you will have an assignment on Google Classroom, so please complete that and submit it and then we'll go from there and we'll talk again tomorrow. Okay guys, have a great day. Sacred Heart of Jesus, pray for us.